Now on Denver 7 News, tragedy across the Denver Metro after a series of deadly crashes and shootings. We have the latest updates from police. Plus, business owners in a historic Denver neighborhood sharing concerns about outside investors and potentially being pushed out. We definitely are scared for people who say, I'm here for black business. Well, the question I pose is, is it only the black businesses that you own a part of? And an Aurora family losing everything in an instant after a suspected arson. We try to save some things from the apartment, but some people are saying it's toxic that we recover these things. How you can help them piece their lives back together. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Bayan Wang. It was a violent and tragic night across the Denver Metro with multiple deadly crashes and shootings. We start off with a deadly crash in Aurora involving four different cars. Police say a child and a woman were killed by a suspected DUI driver. It happened just after 8 p.m. near East 6th Avenue and North Chambers Road. Two other passengers in the car, a man and another child, were taken to the hospital. The man is in critical condition and the child has been released. Police arrested Juan Pascal Lucia on suspicion of DUI and vehicular manslaughter. Excuse me, homicide. In Denver, police are searching for a suspect after three people died in an apparent road rage shooting. It happened yesterday evening near Peoria, Peoria Street and 39th Avenue. Two sedans were heading south on Peoria side by side when the suspect in one of the cars opened fire at the other car. One of the cars crashed into a pickup truck. Two men inside that car and the driver of the truck all died at the scene. Police say the driver of the other sedan fled the scene. If you have any information, call the police or Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. Also in Denver, a man was shot overnight in Lodo, just two blocks from Coors Field. It happened right before 1 a.m. near Market and 20th, and this was during a very busy time down there where a lot of Rockies fans were partying following opening day festivities. Now, the victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be all right, but police say they are still searching for the suspect. DPD is also investigating after a man in a wheelchair was hit and killed on East Colfax last night. The collision happened near Ray Street, closing down westbound Colfax for a while. Police say the driver remained at the scene and is cooperating with investigators. All right, Boulder police are still investigating a suspicious package that was along US 36 overnight. It forced authorities to shut down both directions of the highway for several hours. In a tweet, the Boulder Police Department says they determined the object is safe and that they are still figuring out what it is. Along with closing US 36, officers evacuated four homes in the area as a precaution. The road has since been reopened and those people were allowed to return home. All right, now to the historic Denver neighborhood where many local businesses have spent the last two years struggling amid the pandemic. But now some business owners in the Five Points area says there and there's another threat to the livelihoods. This time it's coming in the form of outside investors. Denver 7 CB Cotton explains. Some businesses here in Five Points tell me growth is a top priority, but after a recent lawsuit between them and an investment firm, they're left wondering who they can trust. Like the intersecting streets of the Five Points neighborhood, some business owners in the area feel they've crossed paths with bad interest. We have community pillars like Welton Street Cafe and other companies and other businesses that are not here anymore. And Lejean Viven says that's because of predatory investors. He's a co-owner of restaurant Agave Shore and says last week he settled a lawsuit with an outside investment firm who became the de facto landlord. He says the firm offers to invest money to help businesses grow, but when things don't go their way, they push people out. They were suing us for forcible eviction, for back cams, back rent, and other minor items. The cams are common area maintenance. It's uh, snow removal, it's security, it's those type of items, the trash. Denver 7 is choosing not to name the investment firm, but the firm still has ongoing litigation with other businesses in the area. Now that Vivens has settled, he wants to speak out on behalf of others who feel silenced or pushed out. We definitely are scared for people who say, I'm here for black business. 
But a question I pose is, is it only the black businesses that you own a part of? So on Saturday, he and others voiced their concerns at a meeting held to help connect black business owners with financial resources. But for Vivens, the meeting was about helping others protect themselves. Who is here to protect us against landlords? In Five Points, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. All right, CB, thank you. All right, real quick, we are learning that the eastbound lanes on US 36 in Westminster are closing because of a crash. That's at mile marker 52, so CDOT is urging drivers to avoid that area. Meantime, we have some high fire danger warnings in effect right now in the Denver Metro. Let's get right over to meteorologist Stacey Donaldson. Stacy, we also have a cold front coming our way. We have some changes happening in the next 24 hours. It's been beautiful today. Highs in the 70s. We hit 76 at DIA, 77 for Colorado Springs, and 80s across the eastern plains. We even have 60s in the higher elevations. But right now we're sitting at 72 degrees. Our winds out of the east at 9 miles an hour. It's been a beautiful day for us. Those wind gusts a little higher off to our west, around 45 miles an hour for Berthoud Pass. Not too bad for the eastern plains, but the winds have definitely picked up. So we do have high fire danger with a red flag warning for the Denver area all the way across the eastern plains. We're keeping a close eye on that, but we also have some scattered showers coming in from the northwest and we could see a few sprinkles overnight here for the Denver area. But tonight for the Rockies, temperatures in the 70s at 6 o'clock, low 60s by 9 o'clock with partly cloudy skies. It'll really be a beautiful evening in Denver tonight as those temperatures stay in the 60s through 9 o'clock and then drop into the 50s. But as I mentioned, we could see a few overnight showers, temperatures in the mid 30s, and then even bigger changes occurring on the seven day forecast. I'll let you know when we might, might see some snow on the way coming up. We'll check back in with you. Thank you. Interior Secretary Deb Holland will be in Colorado next week. Secretary Holland and Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack will travel to Boulder County on Monday to discuss ways to fight wildfires. The visit is part of the Biden administration's rural infrastructure tour. All right, earlier this week, we told you about several suspicious fires in Aurora, one of which burned part of an apartment complex. Now a family of six is trying to pick up the pieces after the fire left them without a home. Denver 7's Christian Lopez spoke with the family today and explains how you can help. This video captured the moment a fire erupted outside Laura Flores' apartment in Aurora. So I um, look um, down the window and I saw like the bushes are on fire. So I, I was like, I get out of bed like super quick. The family of six was asleep Tuesday night when the flames surrounded their home. And I started screaming fire, let's get out. Uh, we called 911. This was one of 10 suspicious fires that broke out in that city that same night. A 17 year old was later arrested and now faces a first degree arson charge. I heard it was a 17 year old boy, so I was like, Dude, that's not good. I mean, we could have been killed. Yeah, we got primary. Right now, the family is temporarily staying in another vacant apartment in this complex, but there's not much in it. They lost almost everything they had, and some of the few things they were able to save still smell like smoke. We try to save some things from the apartment, but some people are saying it's toxic that we recovered these things because because of the smoke, the fire, everything, the water, the, um, the ceiling, everything, the insulation, it's really bad. So maybe it's all like contaminated, you know? Despite losing almost everything they had, the family tells me they're just thankful they got out okay. And if you'd like to help the Flores family, we do have a link on our website. Just go to the denverchannel.com. Reporting in Aurora, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Just absolutely devastating, Christian. Thank you. Now, if you want to help the Flores family, as Christian said, head to the denverchannel.com, then click on the Denver 7 Gives tab and select the Flores family's name on the drop down menu. All right, it's a big day for Pioneers fans. The DU men's hockey team is taking on Minnesota State in the national championship. Denver 7 sports anchor Nick Rothschild joins us now. Nick, this would be their first championship since 2017. Yeah, Bion, a win would mean their first title since 2017, but their ninth title overall, which would tie Michigan for the most in NCAA history. On the other side, Minnesota State, they've never even played in a championship game, so just based on program pedigree, you'd think the Pioneers would have the edge tonight in Boston. However, Minnesota State's been the best team in college hockey all season. They were 35-5, and and their goaltender, Dryden McKay, just became the first goalie since Ryan Miller in 2001 to win the Hobie Baker Award given to top, the top men's college hockey player of the year. McKay beat out DU's own Bobby Brink, 
And Brink's not worried about awards. He knows his team is battle tested. They're ready for this moment. It's not too hard to rebound. We're used to it. Uh, we've played in a lot of tough, big games this year. Uh, I think right after the game, you just mentally shift to the next one, uh, focus right on Minnesota State uh, because uh, this is the biggest game of the year. You know, I was going to sneak a little Masters in here, but they're still golfing in Augusta, so we'll have to wait till they're done. Back to DU. Coffee is for closers, and Denver is basically Starbucks in national title games. You have to go all the way back to 1973 to find their last loss in a championship game. Since 2004, they've won all three title games they've played in. We'll have highlights and reaction at 10. I'll see you then. Baseball is back and the Rocky season is officially underway. Coming up later, how fans are feeling about the upcoming season after the team's Rocky start. And as the weather warms up, you may already be thinking about taking a summer vacation. What you need to know before booking that rental car next.